Welcome to Badlands Rack Attack. As always, I am your host, Blake Van Tussenbrook, coming to you from Badlands headquarters here in Utah. It is officially springtime. We're getting a ton of sunshine. Trees are blooming. A lot of green out there. Exciting. We're enjoying seeing everybody's success out on the turkey hunts. Uh, most of those seasons are open. Some are even coming to a close. People are still out there chasing, so good luck if that's what you're doing. But yeah, we're looking forward to getting to through spring and into summer here. Archery shoots, outdoor shoots, a lot of 3D shooting, getting ready for the hunt season, and then gearing up for the fall hunts. It's going to be here before we know it. But let's get right into Rack Attack this week. We wanted to give you a new product update. We're getting a ton of questions on when is this coming, when is that coming. We show you a lot of new product and give you a lot of sneak peeks here. So we want to give you a quick update on a bunch of that stuff. First and foremost, Boot Gators, the Badlands Master Gators. Boom. They are available now. Yeah. Believe it or not, they're in stock and ready to go. Um, little disclaimer, we should have them up this week. Hopefully they're up by the time this airs. Um, but we're working hard on that. But they should be in stock and available for you to buy right now. So the Boot Gators, we have one approach on here, one approach FX to show you the two color options. You can see it's a tall gator with an adjustable cuff here. Uh, two sizes, medium and large. You can see the sizing chart online to see which one fits you. Mostly it's gonna be that calf size that's gonna determine that. But yeah, awesome, full Velcro closure, uh, Velcro cinch strap up top, super durable uh, bottom strap that's adjustable. You're gonna get a nice tight fit. Um, and yeah, the Badlands Master Gators are available now. Took a pecker to my forehead. Um, other things, real quick. We've shown you these before, so go back to, I believe it was episode six of season one. You can see in-depth looks at these pieces, but Stealth Top, the new lightweight Algus Top with hood and face mask built in, that is coming soon. Uh, end of May, we're gonna have those rolling in. Uh, we should have them in stock up on the website and at dealers in June. Again, that's coming Approach, Approach FX, and the black merino wool version all coming at the same time. And we also have with those the seal top coming, which was the part merino, part algus top. So seal, stealth coming end of May. Those are going to be your awesome early season uh, pieces, perfect for stocking in that warm weather. Pyre jacket and bib. The Pyre series is our new super cold weather jacket and bib that we've been talking about. We're going to give you a peek at those right now. So these are not final pieces. They are samples, but we did want to show you. Rest assured, the hood liner will not be purple upon final approval. A uh, little maybe unknown fact samples. A lot of times they sample uh, the factory does in whatever fabrics on hand. This happened to be a purple hood liner. Well, there you go. Pyre jacket. You can kind of see just me handling this, the heft of this piece. Highly insulated, waterproof zips, waterproof outer, adjustable cuffs, built-in rangefinder pocket, hood. I mean, this is going to be your ultimate cold weather piece. Um, just tons of insulation built into this, but still as lightweight as we can make it. So your cold weather jacket for those long sits in the cold is going to be that Pyre jacket. Uh, the Pyre series is looking about at August, late August, maybe early, early September. Uh, landing date, we'll have those out for you. The bib, again, you can see the heft and the thickness of these, but the Pyre bib, it's going to be, again, black is probably not the final color here up top, but it is kind of a non-bulky upper so that you're not going to have a lot of bulk above the waist, but you're going to have that nice insulated bottom through the legs, uh, through the midsection here, and not have all that bulk up top and not get that draft down your pants that you can get with pants. Pyre bib, Pyre jacket, coming soon. Uh, the Vario system that we've shown you in a previous episode in depth, again, go back and look at that. But Vario is going to be landing in July, that whole system. Frame, packs, accessories, that's all coming in July. We're super excited for that, as we know you are. And the long-awaited Carbon Ox is coming right behind it in August. That's our external frame pack that we've also shown you previously in our meat hauling episode. Go back and look you want to learn more about those. So a lot of new gear coming soon. We wanted to give you that update. Hopefully that helps. Go buy those gators now. Everything else is following shortly. Whew. Moving into the Badlands News Minute. 
we wanted to announce we're going to have something cool coming up. You love Rack Attack. We love the comments, the feedback. Uh, you guys seem to enjoy it. We're going to be adding Rack Attack shorts. So kind of a new mini series spin-off of Rack Attack. They're going to be short videos, probably three minutes or less, uh, similar to this format standing here, but it's going to be focusing on probably one product at a time, a little two to three minute in-depth review of that product, give you all the features, functionality, availability, and just show you really in depth about one product. But that is Rack Attack shorts. We're going to have fun with those. We'll have uh, kind of the same, same format, same humor, same amount of fun, feedback, comments. That'll be a great way for you to interact with us and tell us in the comments each week what you'd like to see in a future Rack Attack short. Feel free on this episode to let us know what you'd like to see on the first Rack Attack shorts that we'll be producing soon. There's your Badlands News Minute. And that brings me into ranting and raving. You all love to hear me whine about things that you probably don't care about. Um, again, this is my way to vent and uh, tell you a little bit about some of the things I'm seeing that are a little annoying. So, one thing I've noticed um, is anytime there's a big event coming out, Avengers Endgame, a uh, big movie coming out, a lot of people waited a lot of years, a uh, big episode of uh, Game of Thrones coming out, uh, the big Battle of Winterfell coming out. It seems like a lot of people, a lot of hunters like to post um, images or graphics or memes about, um, oh, everybody's just posting about Game of Thrones and here I am dreaming about deer season and kind of making fun of the people who have other interests other than hunting. Come on, is not not okay to be interested in more than one thing? I am, I'm a giant uh, Marvel nerd, Game of Thrones nerd. And I, I think it's okay. You can still be passionate about hunting and passionate about other things. Like uh, Game of Thrones, for example. Big episode came out, hugely popular series. Well, if you're not familiar, let me tell you just quickly a little bit about Game of Thrones. So, it, uh, it starts with three brothers of the Night Watch at the wall, and they're coming out of the gate, and they're going north of the wall on an expedition. So they go out and... Uh, they get north of the wall. And, and then there's this other guy named Ned Stark, and he's the Warden of the North, the Lord of Winterfell. Super cool character. And then there's this guy, Jon Snow. He's Ned Stark's bastard, or is he? Sorry, that's not a spoiler. Um, but Jon Snow, super cool character. Um, brothers, sisters up north, lives at Winterfell. And then there's a wow. super hot chick, Daenerys Targaryen, who lives across the Narrow Sea, who feels like she should be the ruler and of the Seven at one point, Kingdom. she walks into the fire carrying three petrified dragon eggs. And what happens? Okay, so I should probably explain the major houses of the Seven Kingdoms. There's the House Baratheon, which is the stag. There's the House Lannister, which is the lion. There's House Stark, which is Ned Stark I was talking about, which is the wolf, live up north. There's uh, House Targaryen, which is Daenerys, the dragon. Oh yeah, and then there's the imp, Tyrion Lannister, who is the younger brother of Jaime Lannister and the younger brother of Cersei Lannister. And then there's the this queen. wedding uh, with Walder Frey between the Freys and the House Tully. Oh. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the wedding. So first Jon Arryn is the Hand of the King, and then Ned Stark is the Hand of the King, and at one point Tyrion the Imp is the Hand of the King. I've always wanted to wear the Hand of the King pin. So the imp Tyrion and his father have major issues. He also has major issues with his brother and his sister. So now across the Narrow Sea, Daenerys has three full-grown dragons flying around, causing all sorts of havoc, growing like crazy. Soon they're gonna be full-grown. So I'll explain it again. You're the stag, you're trying to get around the board, catch your properties, the Irie Pike, catch your yard. You're trying to capture the Iron Throne and sit on the Iron Throne. You get it? Got it. The whole point is to get the Iron Throne, hence the Game of Thrones. So go ahead and roll again. See if you can get it. So Bran is like full on embracing his role as a three-eyed raven at this point, and he's north of the wall. Could it be? Are John and Danny finally falling in love? I feel like there's a secret between them that they don't even know yet. So it's kind of hard to explain. I mean, the wall is up here. That's where the Night's Watch is at Castle Black. You got Winterfell up here in the north. 
The King's Road goes down to King's Landing. That's where Cersei is. Uh, that's where the Iron Throne is. You got High Garden down in the south, and you got Daenerys frolicking around over here with her dragons, trying to solve all and the now world's problems. Watch has ended. So the long night has come and gone. The Battle of Winterfell. We're finally going to see who's going to sit permanently on the Iron Throne. What were we talking about? Oh, Ranton and Raven. That's that's where we were. Okay, enough of that. Uh, let's move into the segment, What Say Ye? All right, the first comment from last episode is from Jorge Montes. He said, you should show us the camo hats you guys have. It's a simple enough request. So, pay attention, we have a bunch. And all of these are available in either Approach or Approach FX. So you can get the Approach or the Approach FX trucker. Camo front, mesh back, Stretch, flex fit, snap back, very comfortable. You can get a straight up full camo snap back in either a pattern as well, if that's your preferred style. Uh, we have full camo, flex fit, so fully fitted, flex fit, small, medium, or large, extra large, available in both camos. You can see the Approach FX fully flex fit version there. And then we do a youth flex fit as well. Youth size, both patterns available. Those are the camo hat options we have. There you go, Jorge. Uh, D Royal said, I've had the pleasure of using the Alpha Gear and calling it Rain Gear is selling it short, Blake. It is category five hurricane, whiteout blizzard, survive to tell the tale when you shouldn't gear. Well, that's high praise for the Alpha Gear and we agree, you saw a little rain test last week in that episode, but yeah, the Alpha Rain Gear is bomb, and D-Royal agrees. And moving on from what say ye, we're gonna add a new segment for you this week. We're calling it Unbelievable You. So this segment is featuring the photos you sent in. The first one you see here is from Gary Fellows. He sent this in of him wearing his Approach FX Catalyst Rain Gear while he was setting out cameras in Northern British Columbia. He says it's the perfect pattern for late fall and early spring hunts where he is. Thanks, Gary, for sending that in. The next photos, Ross Melville sent us a couple photos, and he said, I wore approach camo through most of the 2018 season, but thought to give approach FX a try as well. I'm very impressed. It's going to be my new go-to for the late extended archery season. It blends so well my dad couldn't even see me when I went in for a stock. Thanks for making badass gear to keep and help me go further and stay longer. So thank you to Gary and Ross for sending in those photos. Anytime we feature you in that segment, we're going to send you some Badlands swag. So enjoy that and look out for that, Gary and Ross. Moving into Freestyle, your absolute favorite segment and one of ours. We love giving free stuff away. We're featuring a comment uh, or question from last week's um, episode from Kai Ramirez who asked, can you show how one might attach a bow to the Ascent Pack. The Ascent Pack is awesome. Let me grab it here. It's a little bit overlooked in our lineup because people kind of always jump to the 2200 pack, but it's a similar size, over 2,000 cubic inches. Uh, really cool wide mouth opening pack. Um, really easy access to everything. Padded spotting scope pocket as well. And it has our bow wrap carrier system, which Kai is asking about. I'm just gonna real quickly show you. That's this thing here. It's real simple. If you undo two sides, there's two buckles here at the bottom. Um, if I'm carrying a bow or something, I just undo those and let them hang. I don't even bother with those. You grab the Approach FX Expedition bow here. It really is just a compression point. It's gonna sit in there, two buckles. Obviously, when you have a sight on here, you're gonna have to adjust that a little bit and find your, your sweet spot, but really that's gonna hold it steady. Um, as far as that goes, tighten those up obviously as tight as you can. Um, add the bow boot in the bottom here. The bow boot accessory will click in here. Put it on the bottom there for extra support and protection if you want. But that's really all there is to it. The Ascent Pack, it's available now. It's an awesome alternative to the 2200 internal frame. Uh, real awesome pack, the Ascent Pack. And we are gonna send Kai the Alpha Jacket that we featured in the last episode. We're sending in his question. We're gonna hook him up in Hawaii. 
with that alpha jacket, we have a feeling he'll get some good use out of it over there on the island. And that's going to pretty much wrap us up for today. We hope you enjoyed looking at the new gear, um, hearing me rant and raving a little bit, seeing some of your photos, some of your gear. Again, uh, questions, videos, photos, send all that stuff to rackattack at badlandspacks.com. We want to feature your content, your questions, and hopefully we answer a lot of those here. We certainly try. And remember to comment, subscribe, and share so we can keep the Rack Attack train rolling. We had a blast this week. We hope you did too. Happy hunting, happy spring, and remember, Valor Morgulis. Now be a good little hunter and make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share.